Alright, in this video I want to demonstrate some of the most intriguing aspects of complex numbers. Well, I like to look at it this way. Compared to complex numbers, real numbers are really quite boring because we can represent real numbers on a number line because they only have one dimension and that's pretty much the end of the story. So we get a real number and we uh, draw a dot on a number line corresponding to where it is and that's it. But with complex numbers we actually can represent them in two dimensions. We do it by graphing them on what's called an Argand diagram. So here we have a real axis which is the number line that I was talking about and we also have uh, because complex numbers have an imaginary component we also have an imaginary axis. So we can represent complex numbers much more visually than we can represent real numbers. So for instance, the complex number 2 plus 3i, we can plot it on the complex plane. And to do that, we simply draw a cross or a dot corresponding to its real and imaginary components. So here we have z1 with the coordinates 2, 3. So another way to represent a complex number, instead of writing 2 plus 3i, is to write 2 comma 3. And be careful not to confuse this with the coordinates in plane geometry. So be aware of the context. But I believe that complex numbers are actually better represented as vectors. So we can draw a vector from the origin to the coordinate of the complex number. And I'll show you why it's very effective to represent complex numbers as vectors in just a moment. Now let's say that we have the complex conjugate of this complex number Z1. So Z1 bar. And by the way, this form of the complex number, this A plus BI form or A plus IB form, is what we call the Cartesian form of the complex number. So the complex conjugate of Z1 in Cartesian form is 2 minus 3i. And again, if we plot that on the complex plane to the coordinates are 2 comma negative 3. So Z bar is 2 negative 3. And if I draw another vector from the origin to the point. We can note that the complex conjugate is a mirror image of the original vector about the real axis. And this works for any complex number. So basically a complex conjugate is a mirroring of the complex number about the real axis. Okay, let's say that I have a complex number of Z2 is equal to 6 plus 0i. So in fact here we have a pure real number because the imaginary component is equal to 0. So we can simply plot that on the real axis. I'll draw that with a red dot. So here we have Z2 with the coordinates 6, 0. And let's see what happens when we multiply z2 by uh, i. So if we multiply i with z2, we get 6i. So i multiplied by z2 is equal to uh, 0, 6. And if I draw a vector from the origin to the original z2 of 6, 0, this is, what it this is what it would look like. And if I drew a vector from the origin to iz2, this is what it would look like. So when we have multiplied by i, effectively what we have done is rotated the original vector anti-clockwise 
by 90 degrees. So let's multiply by i again. So let's multiply this result by i. So we have i squared z2 is equal to 6i squared. And i squared is of course equal to negative 1, so we have negative 6. So we can plot the new coordinates i squared z2 of negative 6, 0 on the complex plane and it's just uh, obviously negative 6 on the real real axis and if we drew a vector to it from the origin we can see that the vertical vector has been rotated again by 90 degrees anti-clockwise. So the general rule here is when we multiply a complex number by i, graphically on the complex plane it is a rotation of that complex number by 90 degrees anti-clockwise. So it follows then that i cubed z2 would be down here, would be negative 6i And if we multiply by i again, it's another rotation to the uh, anti-clockwise by 90 degrees. And we get back to what we have in the beginning, so I'll write that down, i to the fourth. i to the fourth of z2, or i to the fourth of any complex number, is simply equal to the original complex number.